All right. So before we start this episode, I just have to preface this. So you know what you're getting yourself into. So you you can say that I warned you before you went in if you're completely shocked and awed by what happens. I've been waiting to have this episode with Josh Bigger, aka Best Damn Roofer, aka Lord Big Time, for probably two years now since I first stumbled onto his videos. He's raw, he's unfiltered, he's unedited. That's kind of the genius behind who he is. I mean, he's built a community up of roofers, other people in the industry that kind of gravitate towards his personality. It's satire, don't get me wrong. And that's one thing we're gonna discuss. Like Josh Bigger co-owns a roofing company with his wife. They do things in the community. They contribute to charitable efforts, all this awesome stuff up in Canada. Best damn roofer on the other hand, uh, does a lot of drugs and a lot of drinking and is very brash. Uh, so that's why I was fascinated with this episode. And that's why I wanted to talk to Josh a little bit today because he's built this amazing brand online. He's done such an amazing job. Grassroots put a video out, saw success, started building on it. He's got a, a TV series coming out. He's got so much other things going on. And I really wanted to dig in to find out, you know, from the beginning, was this his plan, how this all turned out. Um, Cause I think there's a lot of lessons in here that you can learn, apply to your marketing about how to build a brand. Um, <laughs> maybe not necessarily like how uh, Josh has built his, but you can build a brand by just being yourself, being real. So that's <laughs> the Mr. Rogers neighborhood opening to this episode. So again, this podcast is unedited. I just want to clarify that. Um, there's a lot of cursing. There's a lot of drug and alcohol references. You're not allergic to smoke, are you? Nope. So if you're, uh, at an appointment with a homeowner. Maybe you don't have this on speakerphone. Uh, if you're at church, maybe don't listen to it at all. Uh, totally up to you, but I just want to make sure that you know that this episode is kind of brash and in your face and just kind of raw. Because honestly, it would do an injustice, I think, to what Josh is building with Best Damn Roofer and, and how he's done it. And also, if I tried to edit it, it would just be one long bleep every time he talked. We're just gonna roll with it how it is. So without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and kick the episode off. Again, this is Josh Bigger, AKA Best Damn Roofer, AKA Lord Big Time. Hope you enjoy. Every day is an opportunity for you to learn something that sets your home improvement or home services business apart from the competition. Let's make today one of those days. This is a podcast for home improvement and home services marketing. This is Built By. So you've got to be adaptable. You've got to find a way to accommodate an uncomfortable customer. If you're not getting the home advisor leads in the first five minutes, you shouldn't even do it. Hopefully we're eating their lunch while they're trying to get back up and running. That's awesome. I got my, my dad's with me today. Bubba what's, John's. All right. What's going on, man? The, the creator. <laughs> <laughs> I want to kind of establish to the listeners, and probably a ton of people already know you, but, you know, talk a little bit, not about your bio, but I'd love to hear, you know, how you got your start in home improvement and what kept you there and, and why you found this was like kind of your, 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 your calling, I guess. Do you want the Josh Bigger story or the uh, Lord Big Time story? Let's start with the Josh Bigger. Let's <laughs> let's let's peel back I the started, end. Of <laughs> I started roofing like uh, a little odd jobs here with my dad, like family uh, jobs, right? We do the grandma's house and uncle's house, and just working, trying out roofing really young at a uh, young age, and then I started working for my brother's father-in-law. Um, probably 17, 18, and just kind of dove in from there. And I liked it. It's hard work. Nobody else really wanted to do it. If you worked hard, you could kind of move ahead quickly, some cash money here and there as well. And then, of course, uh, being a strong-minded person, I decided to say, you know, fuck you to the boss one day and go on my own. I could do it better myself. So that was years ago, right? Yeah, no, that's awesome, man. So it's kind of like yeah. a BDR story mixed in there too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's awesome. So you you kind of found your calling there, and like I, I think it it's why you resonate so well with like the audience that you're going after, especially with the with the BDR. But you know, let's let's talk a little bit about like the two personas, I guess. So um, you know, Josh Bigger, bigger roofing owner. Um, I think you co-own it with your wife Tanya, and then 
Best damn roofer is kind of your persona yeah. on the side that is, uh, I, I, I can't even describe it in words. It's just an amazing, it's like if trailer park boys were in it's roofing. The roofer. <laughs> it's the roofer. Yeah, uh, right. it, it's, so the persona kind of is, okay, like let's put it this way, like Josh, bigger in his 20s, was no, uh, you know, was no angel, put it that way. So the behavior and the, and the attitude and that character is pretty much me when I was full of testosterone in my young age. So it's kind of like, it is me a little bit. Of course, the character is me, obviously. But uh, it's kind of like if I never got out of that stage, right? Like I just maniac stage. I'm pushing 40 now. I'm like an old fucking bum now, but you know? <laughs> so uh, yeah. the character but- has a, it gets me too. It's almost like living vicariously through a, through my alter ego. Yeah, it's it's crazy. It it takes things to such an extreme, and I think that's why it resonates with like roofers and stuff, right? So a lot of roofers uh, they even have like you know, a lot of them have issues or past issues with substances. And mm-hmm. even if a guy doesn't do drink it anymore, doesn't smoke pot or you know anything, they still relate to. It. They still find it funny. There's a humor. It's it's a satire, right? So the yeah. whole idea is that somebody, even if you're a, a recovering alcoholic, you'll still find funny. Uh, and laugh at the fact that this guy's destroying his life with alcohol, right? And you're glad mm-hmm. you're not doing it anymore and you find humor in it, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, so absolutely. We get a lot of positive feedback from people that are recovered addicts and they just think it's hilarious and they make fun of it because that's their life. They're, that was their life. And part of recovery and part of healing is learning to laugh at that. And if you can learn to laugh at it, then you're actually healing yourself, right? So yeah. if somebody's actually getting offended by me, then it means you're still a junkie and you got to recover or you're enjoying doing drugs and you can just keep doing that. Right. Yeah. I think that's what brings you in together, right? Like I think yeah. all these guys kind of go through the same thing and I think that's what makes it such a strong bond. But you know, I want to I want to take a step back and actually talk about kind of the beginning there. Like were videos and was this persona brand was this something that you had planned to get into or was it kind of a spur of the moment like I'm just going to throw some videos out there type of thing. Well, I I I explained that uh... I think Dimitri asked me a very similar question, and I and I, so I explained how it started out. As we did some community service uh, for uh, work with the local distributor, and we got free shingles. We did um, uh, a free roof giveaway. But in, in turn, the IKO gave me a couple um, iPads, and they had uh, iMovie on them. So it came with the app to make movies. Which I was yeah. an artsy guy. I like music and stuff, but you know the idea of having your own TV show, like really, like I was like, oh my god, like you can have this iPad and you can make your own movies, like, and it's pretty much generic too. So it's like, I'm a finger banger on the keypad, right? So this is like one button. I could do all this editing, and it kind of just that's how we got the idea of doing it, and then the idea of making videos is just let's do something stupid, right? Uh, I was watching. Um, the crumb lord now he was making his own videos he's this crazy roofer but he's just getting fucking wasted on the roof drinking vodka and they're they're just roofing and being fucking maniacs and i just decided to uh do that i was like i'll check it out you know a big trailer park boys fan uh, i love comedy i do love partying <laughs> and so i just kind of threw it all together with my life and i'm like and it was also another avenue to like tell people to go fuck themselves without it wasn't me saying it it was BDR, right? So, like, maybe the BDR is just Josh Bigger. It's just me fucking trying to hide all the all the emotions I want to spew out on social media without saying it came directly from my Bible. <laughs> yeah. That makes any sense. Well, no, it's a good outlet. Okay. So, so, like, that, I'd love to like, that, beginning, <laughs> that beginning of, like, when you, you put that first video out there. Uh, I don't not many people strike gold on that on that first dig right so how did you find motivation to just like keep doing it or were you were you even expecting anything gold. I was big time. my first video i put that was a rapping video but we smoking dope and drinking on a on a roof and i just put it out it's called best damn roofer best damn roofer in the whole damn land best damn roofer from here to afghanistan motherfucker. And that shit fucking five thousand views the first fucking three hours it went out and i was on youtube this is going back like seven years ago and i was like that was good at the time right i was like what the fuck because every all the roofers <laughs> shared this shit because they're like it was the most fucked up shit and it was like this is us smoking and drinking on the roof so it got shared 
and that now it was for that it was after that happening now it's the fact that you have to keep creating the content to stand up to now you're like oh this guy's great he's cool now it's like oh really fuck am i i just did one video and now everyone loved it so <laughs> that's kind of what happened it started off as a music video and then it was like let's just start making a sitcom and then like right now we're shooting 26 episodes uh 13 which are now going to be called the best damn roofer show we have uh with backing and then we also have the roofing university show so we're actually becoming more of an actual commercialized show rather than you know hand banger youtuber so we've, we've we've changed a lot but it all started with one video that actually went viral for me at the time i think it got over a hundred thousand views but at the time five thousand the first i mean the first couple hours it went out um but saying that story happened i was really i was really online a lot with the ruby community so i was already out there so people knew who i was being a mouth mouthy ignorant piece of shit online so people hated me right i just built this big community that fucking hated me or a ruby yeah. loved me and that's where <laughs> so i was like an online keyboard warrior it just pissed people off because i'm like an old school fucking roofer and uh this turned into having fun and now it's just a big community kind of like a call classic i'd say and followers are great people love it i get noticed 10 times a day walking down the fucking street it's hilarious yeah. actually no, that's perfect that's awesome man yeah. like I, w- I want to dig a little bit into what you were saying about consistency though like you can't become what you have become without consistency. And there's always this drive to like, all right, I got to make some better shit than I did last time. And you got to just got to keep improving it. Is that, is that your mentality? Or are you just like pick up the camera and just like, this is what I'm thinking. Um, so like, I got a big, I got a big one where, where, you know, I have a nice big production I'm working on. And that's one of the things that's making it a big, you know, like it's top notch production. Right. But a lot of content is just, being out, like, you're just talking to your fans every day. Like, fuck, I put out 70 posts last week on Instagram or some fucking thing. So I'm just basically, everything I do, everything we're going through, throw it online. Once people start wanting to know about you more, they look for it. So just content comes naturally. If you're if you're enjoying making videos and making content, then you'll you'll actually uh, do it with these after, after a while. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And hey, go ahead. Oh, sorry. As you see what's online for content, people will post basically anything. People will watch anything. So, I mean, as you <laughs> yeah. can see, I, I'm, do, I'm doing it right now. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Sure. Right? <laughs> right. See, that, that's what's interesting, though, is like we were talking about this the other day, but like you've had your page removed. You've had videos taken down. A lot of your content's been lost to the ether. Yet still, you have this like core group of people that like just love to watch your stuff. And like, what I'm really curious about is like, is it just a shock to you that happened, or is it because you have such a like a voice for the community? And I know we talked a little bit about you know some of the things that it's like satire, right? That a lot of these guys are going through. But uh, what do you kind of attribute to that? You know, they they still find you anywhere. Well, the thing is, when I started doing this, I told my wife like, before it started, I said, you know what, like, I was like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to become the world's most famous roofer. It's just, there's nobody out there doing it. There's a couple plumbers. There's like a couple other guys doing this and that. But like, I'm going to fucking just, I'm the best. And that's the way it is. I'm going to make outrageous videos that make, like, where I just do outrageous shit. And they're going to, people are going to jam it down their fucking throat. And I just, that's what I did. So, um, my followers, like, my whole concept of me is that I don't give a fuck what anyone thinks. I'm real, and that's what I do. I like my comedy. If you don't like it, go fuck yourself. If you like it, great. If you don't like it, I won't, you don't want me to work for you, good, because I don't want to fucking work for you anyway. That's pretty much how I, I am. I'm a fun-loving guy. I love my community. I love my friends and family, but, like, I uh, really don't give a fucking shit. You know, I, I only care about my family and friends, and I'm having fun, and if you don't like it, fuck, get out of my fucking way. So uh, my followers, they really appreciated that, and they followed me through hell, and I've been through hell. And... Uh, yeah, uh, that's where I'm at, man. Yeah, that's why I do what I do. Uh, I was thinking about if this was going to be an edited podcast, but now I'm just saying, fuck it, let's open the floodgates. Here. Oh, you can't edit big time, buddy. Yeah, just like, now you look like a fool if you try to edit this video. It won't make any sense. Okay? I'll, I'll be a bunch of beeps. <laughs> that's awesome. So, yeah, yeah, speaking of this, this like confidence you have with all this stuff, like, do you ever get video block or are you just like... Honestly, I get shadow banned all the time. Like, so I'll do these really viral videos, and they'll be going well, and then I'll just put out like these really obscene videos, like, like ones that are so obscene that like that I probably shouldn't put them out, and everyone says I shouldn't, but a part of me is like, what would big time do? 
Big Tom would do what he fucking wants. So he puts them out. <laughs> and it's probably, uh, I probably lost a lot of sponsorships and people that don't want to work with me, but in all honesty, I don't really care. So, like, <laughs> yeah. But well, there you go. Tell, I'm working with a lot of companies still, ones that understand <laughs> the comedy and appreciate who they're selling to. They're not selling to uh, people that are getting upset and being a little crybabies. They're selling to roofers and construction people. So we're all pretty much the same. And that's why people in the industry enjoy the content because it's real. Totally. <laughs> and, you know, what I'm really interested in, though, is like, all right, so you've got bigger roofing is like your 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 own roofing company. And then yeah. you've got BDR. And when these two worlds like collide, right? And, you know, I was, I was reading a little bit about bigger roofing and like you guys give back to the community. Um, I saw you did a free roof for like a volunteer firefighter with Lou Gehrig's disease. Like yeah. you're, you're doing amazing things. Um, how, do you run into that clash where customers might see, come across your stuff? And have you seen that before? And any reactions there? I've had a few over the, over the years. Um, but a lot of people, like I just, I don't even run a crew. I'm usually alone or with like one or two helpers. So, like, people want to hire me. I mean, I'm the only guy on the roof doing your roof. I mean, if you appreciate my humor, you, you might uh, you might hire me. I ran into it probably twice that people wouldn't want to, and I just basically said I wouldn't want to work for you fucking anyway. So, like, but if you called, I wouldn't even fucking answer. Like, because I wouldn't, because I have already booked up. I don't have, I can only do so many jobs, so some douchebag. Is crying that I made a funny video and he's like, oh, "Who would hire you?" Like, "Go oh, fuck yourself, man. I'm busy anyway." Like, that's what I talked to him like, and then have a fucking day. That's yeah. just the way I would like. Man, shit. It's, yeah, <laughs> it's, dude, it's crazy. Like, I see, I'm in all these like roofer groups on like Facebook and stuff, and I see like people just bitching about customers all the time, and like customers hitting them up afterwards, and just homeowners that really don't have anything else going on other than like picking a fight with the contractor and the guy who did work, uh, you know, on their house. Well, so, see, the problem is that a lot of contractors will hire out a sub crew. They're not seeing the work. For me, I'll bang the roof on. I'll see every inch of that roof so I know exactly how it went on, when it went on, and there will be no issue because you dealt with the guy that put it on. So, I mean, you don't like fucking, you don't, you don't like funny videos? Then don't hire me. But if you like funny videos and you like your roof done right, eh? Because my fucking funny videos are about the company that you're going to hire to put your roof on. That's what the guy's going to show up all fucked up and stupid, wrecking your roof, yelling at you, fighting with you, right? <laughs> with a job, the roof would be perfect, though. <laughs> That's what counts. I would say that. It'd be pretty good, though. <laughs> Dylan, Dylan was on half my roof, so half the side's probably pretty average. <laughs> so I gotta go fix a bunch of his shit and all the mistakes he made, but other than that, yeah, they're probably pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Well, awesome. yeah, all in all, like, I've had, like, the rapport's really good, like, I just landed three roofs today for like, that's going to keep me booked up for, you know, two weeks, uh, just cause the guy's a big fan of BDR. Yeah. I mean, right now it's right now it just solidifies my work and my, everyone gets to see my craftsmanship with my steel work. So if I have to compete with somebody, I just show them my crafts and my metal work. And I'm like, do they do this kind of craftsmanship? They probably can't. Right. So that's yeah. me on a whole different level. So they're just, they're shinglers. They're not actually roofers, we call them, right? They just be a shingler. They can put on IKO or gaff, but they can't roof a roof. They can just right. shingle it, right? Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah, so, so I throw a little bit of dirt in the customer, eh? a little bit of dirt in the, uh, the competition's eye, eh? <laughs> there you go. Yeah. yeah. Always going uh, on the uh, pitch there. That's awesome. Uh, awesome, man. You know, that's really all the, the questions I have. I have one last question I love to ask every guest on the show, and it's the last tip before we dip. So um, what's the number one piece of advice you would give uh, marketers, owners, you know, anyone in home improvement right now? Anyone in home improvement right now in marketers? When you're doing marketing your own business and you're promoting yourself, be yourself. Don't try to be something you're not and try to be some phony fake you know, like, oh, yeah, let's go save the cows or whatever. You know, just be yourself. When you start being something, like you look fake. Everyone knows you can see it right on the wall. And that's why people won't trust you right away because you're not being honest. The honesty goes a million miles. Just be honest. You'll see. And I've gone with that my whole life. So, I mean, I might be a little rough around the edges, but I'm as honest as it gets. You know, roofers are roofers. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what you see is what you get sort of thing. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, that's awesome, man. Uh, you know, that's all the time that I, that's all the questions I really had. And I'd love to give you, you know, just a couple minutes for any listeners, anybody that's checking this podcast out, you know, where they can find you, what you've got on the horizon, you know, what, what's, what's going on in, in the best damn roofers world. So I mentioned earlier in the podcast that we're shooting 26 episodes, 13, which will be comedy. It's the best damn roof for show. It's going to be uh, 23 to 24 minute episodes. Um, and then we're going to do another whole different series called Roofing University. Now, this is going to be totally different. It's with me and Tanya. It's going to be an educational, um, instructional, more based videos. And we'll be doing interviews and stuff and podcasts. And, uh, you know, we might be doing another podcast with you in the future on Roofing University. Um, yeah. So we're just trying to broaden our horizons because everyone's always giving me a hard time. Like, I've destroyed the industry. Like, I get this bad rap because I'm always doing bad shit. So I'm like, fuck it. I'll start doing some nice shit. My wife bugged me long enough. Fuck, I'll do something good for the community, I guess. So I got to do Roof in University <laughs> coming soon. Yeah. Right? No swearing. <laughs> no bullshit. No dope. No, none of that fun stuff. It's going to be regular plain Jane, plain Tanya. Yeah. yeah hey, I've seen a, so. a few of those. Uh, I think you have a few up on your uh, YouTube channel, right? Um, yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. a couple. Uh, we These ones are going to be more in-depth and more professional. The ones we have um, out right now are mostly like uh, ones I've just done myself. We are currently working with a a guy that is doing production with us. His name is Mark. He's a close friend. He's going to be in a character in the um, upcoming show as well. He plays Dick, the homeowner, with a bunch of other uh, antics that are going to happen through the 13-episode series. So Yeah. <laughs> Well, I'm excited. So that's what's going on in a nutshell. Yeah, that's awesome. I'm, I'm excited for that roofing account. It's going to be like this old house versus this old crack house. I'm pretty excited about what you guys have lined up there. Ah, perfect. Yeah, I appreciate that. Uh, <laughs> it'll be something a little different. It's something we need to try. Uh, we got a lot of opportunity with uh, this new way we're going. So um, it's a new adventure, but something new. It's keeping it interesting for us, right? I've been at it for a while, so change it up a little bit, give it a new fresh pair of legs, maybe. Yeah. Keep me going for a while until I get, you know, sick of it all. <laughs> <laughs> no, it goes, man. Well, awesome, Josh. Thank you so much for joining, man. Uh, I'm going to hop off, chug the rest of this bush light, and then uh, I'm going to shotgun it in your honor, man. <laughs> okay, when I get home, I'm going to drink a beer and smoke a joint for you, though, brother. <laughs> hey, perfect. All right, thanks all right. so much. Did I get a big, get a big time? Lord, big, big time. time? Big time! <laughs> <laughs> See you, brother. Awesome. Thanks, man.